Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be making breakfast with you guys because I am starving and I haven't eaten yet. Sorry I had to cancel yesterday's live. I had some issues with technology, obviously. Happens, um, but I will reschedule the fancy uh, easy cocktail making for tomorrow afternoon. Um, and again, if you can't make it to the live, you can always tune in afterwards and watch it. Um, so today we're going to make breakfast sandwiches all using this tiny little, I can't touch it too much because it's warm, um, dash waffle iron. So cute. Comes in a ton of colors. If you don't like pink, they make it in red and blue and green or green black. Um, but they are so cute and they're so inexpensive. They're like under $10. Sometimes you'll see them for like 11 on Amazon. Um, but yeah, they're so cute and they work so well. Um, they heat up really quickly. I feel like they work better than normal waffle irons, and I like that they're just small and easy to use. I don't know if you guys have seen me do some other stuff like fun, like let's see if we can make a cookie into a waffle. <laughs> but it's super easy to use, super inexpensive. I like that it's just like less of a like deal than a whole waffle iron. Um, so I end up using this a lot more. It's easier to clean, it's just whatever. And if you don't have a full kitchen, like if you were in a dorm or a small apartment, it's easy, easy to store, you don't need anything special, you don't need a stove, you don't need a microwave. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make breakfast sandwiches and everything is gonna be cooked in this little waffle iron. So you don't have to use it for everything, but I'm gonna show you how you can use it to cook everything. Um, so what we've got are some ready to go biscuit dough, there is ready to go biscuit dough, some eggs, we've got some bacon, we've got some cheese, we got some potatoes, and as we go, I'll kind of tell you what alternatives you can use. Um, you can mix and match, you can try your own thing. You could also make this like all individually or all in one, like cook it within the biscuit. Um, but so first things first, we're gonna start by preheating. So this has been heating up, that's why I couldn't touch it. Um, I wanted it ready to go for you guys. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is cook the biscuit because I feel like it's okay if it's not as warm, right? So. It'll all still be pretty warm because it only takes like a minute or two to cook everything, but I think it's more important for the egg and like the potato to be toasty versus the biscuit. So what we're gonna do is you just open it up and it's ready to go. There aren't like multiple heat settings or anything. I like to use this uh, Pam grilling spray versus like olive oil or anything because it doesn't add any flavor. Um, you just spray it. You don't have to, I like using it. It just keeps it clean and easier like get everything out and all that. So you're gonna take a ready to go biscuit and I just like to like thin it out a little bit. I'm just gonna place it in there and close it. And you're just gonna wanna keep an eye on it because they cook quickly. And um, I'll let you know as I see it kind of puffing up and I'll probably press it down again. Um, I actually have one already made if you can see that. That's literally just biscuit dough. And it looks like a waffle, but it's gonna taste like a biscuit. Um, I thought it would be easier than doing two in a row and then you're just like bored. You're like, cool, I get it. <laughs> um, but so in the meantime, we're gonna get everything else ready. This next thing that I'm gonna make is the bacon. This is just ready to go bacon. Um, you can use whatever you want, sausage crumbles. You don't even need meat. You can use sausage patties. Um, deli meat works. Um, again, it'll, the cooking time will vary. So if you're using like deli meat, right? So if you had like a piece of, like a slice of ham or a slice of turkey and you were putting it in there, or even like a piece of salami, you're not gonna need to cook it as much as the bacon because the bacon is cured, not raw, but cured raw and needs to be cooked more. So we're gonna check on this. It's fluffing up. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. It's far away, but we're just gonna push on it. Be careful, it gets a little toasty. I think I've told you guys before, have no heat sensors but so you know you could use a towel i have a hard time personally using pot holders i know that sounds crazy but i feel like i struggle they need to make like glove pot holders or something for me because i just don't end up using them i always end up like borderline burning my fingers but so yeah so we've got a lot of stuff going on we're gonna check on this one more time it's almost there and again it just kind of gauge like do you like your biscuits where you're like stuff crispy, do you like it a little softer? It doesn't take that long though. And again, if you don't 
if you don't have one of these, you could use a regular waffle iron. It doesn't really matter. But I think this is fun. It's just like a little one-stop shop. So I'm just going to keep pushing on it. Get it all cooked. And there we go. So it's ready to go. I'm going to get it out. I like using a fork. I feel like it's the easiest thing to get stuff out with. So we've got... I'm going to see if I can hold it. Yeah, I'm fine. Right? Crazy. Awesome. So I'm just going to set that to the side. Actually, I'll set it on my, my plate that's ready to go. Be organized. So the next thing I'm going to do is bacon. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to spray it a little. With the bacon, you don't necessarily need to because it's going to have grease. But I also like doing the bacon in the next step because then it gives your like eggs and everything kind of like a little bacony flavor. So this is... You could... Definitely cut this into smaller pieces, but I just like to lay it kind of and, like overlap it. And I'm just gonna close it. And I'm gonna smoosh it, smoosh it down, and let it cook. I'll check on it in a few seconds. Um, like I said, you can use any meat you want. The um, I love these little ready-to-go crumbles from Jimmy Bean. They're tasty. They make them in original pork, turkey. You can also use like a vegan crumble if you're vegetarian. Um, this recipe is hard to make vegan, but you technically could. I'm not a master with the egg substitutes. I don't really know how to cook with them, but you could do like a eggless breakfast sandwich, right? So you could do like some whatever biscuits or I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. I'm not as good with the vegan stuff, but if you're a vegetarian, you could easily make this vegetarian, either by not having meat or using a vegan meat. It's pretty straightforward. That stuff cooks pretty easily. They have so many options. Chorizo would be tasty. You can also mix the meat into the egg and cook it. I've seen people do that a lot. Um, this isn't my idea, by the way, completely. Doing it step by step is, I haven't seen that, but I've seen people make eggs and mix up. People make pretty much everything in these. If you search TikTok, you can probably find it. So I'm not trying to take complete credit for it. Let's see how we're going. Again, I'm gonna use this towel because I don't wanna burn myself live. Getting there. It would be that, like, I remember we talking about that one live where Erin had to go to the hospital because she got bacon burns. Um, so while we wait for this, we're gonna look, let's see, what am I gonna make next? I think I'm gonna do the potatoes next. I think that's gonna be the best call. Um, because I want to wait and do the eggs last. Got like bacon smoke coming in there. Hopefully we don't set the smoke alarms off. If we do, I apologize and we'll have to end. <laughs> but we're close. I'm going to set this over the top. Hopefully it absorbs. I'll watch it so I don't start a fire or something, but I also don't want to start the smoke alarms during this. That would be so embarrassing. I can't keep the windows and doors open while I'm doing all of this or the fans because then you wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, so yeah, so I just have these Simply Potatoes. I have diced ones. You could also use um, hash browns. I usually use tater tots, but I surprisingly was all out. I don't know how, I don't know when I made all my tater tots. That was initially what I was planning on doing with these because you can just thaw out a few hash browns. So what you could do is just take like, I'd say five hash, or not hash, uh, um, tater tots. So take like five frozen tater tots, put them in a plastic Ziploc bag or some Tupperware or something throw them in your fridge overnight and let them thaw because you don't want them frozen. And then you can use them the next day. So you'd need like four or five tots per sandwich, but those work really well. So then you don't need something specific, like breakfast specific, but I prefer to use some of the frozen stuff because I'm not super consistent with making breakfast foods. So, but these are great. I love this brand. Their potatoes are amazing. So we're gonna use these in a second. Let's check on the bacon. It's almost there. I'm gonna move it and see if it, see where we're at. I might flip it to, just to get a little extra crispy. It's close, but I did a recipe recently where my, I made bacon and I prefer my bacon like not completely charred in food because then it just gets soggy and weird. Um, <laughs> like if I'm eating it by itself, I want it super crispy, but if it's mixed into a recipe, if I, if I start with it like, almost burnt, I feel like it gives a weird texture and it ends up getting kind of soggy and gives like a burnt flavor. So 
But with this, you want it kind of crispy. It's in a sandwich. You want a little texture, right? So we're getting there. So I'm just going to get the potatoes ready. So let's see. how many I'll use. It's probably way too much. Put some back in there. So yeah, these are just, I, don't quote me on it, but they seem like they're just kind of like parboiled potatoes. Like they're not completely cooked to the point where they're like soggy, but they're ready to go. Let's see, I think we're almost ready with the bacon. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab that and let it cool off. I'm going to put it on my plate. You could do a few of them, but for the purpose of this live, I don't want to waste all of your time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the potatoes on here. And I'm just going to start with a couple. I'm just going to use the hands. Because we don't want it to be like overflowing. It needs to be like an even layer. Again, be careful. You don't want to burn yourself. Do one more. Even it out, right? I'm also going to add a little salt and pepper here. This is just like a seasoned salt. I have no idea where I got it. Oh, shoot. Look at that. I'm making a mess live. Looks like the... <laughs> Lovely. The uh, peppercorn lid was not tight, by the way. Lovely. Welcome. Live cooking. I'll clean that in a second. Let me find my other pepper. You'll get to do a live clean with me. Should have used that in the first place, but I was trying to be fancy. All right, so I think we just need a little spray on the top, and I'm gonna close this. Oh shoot, that was hot. Look at me, I'm falling apart, guys. Let me grab a spoon. I got all thrown off. That's what happens when you're live. Don't worry, everything's clean. Be sanitized before we went live. Hopefully, in some way, this makes it feel more real and endearing that I'm a hot mess today live. <laughs> That's why this is called Erin's Fake Cooking Show, because I mess things up all the time. All right, so, well, I was planning on getting the eggs ready. I'm just going to have to clean up the peppercorn mess I just made. Bear with me. I won't go too crazy cleaning because you won't be able to see it. But that's how it goes, right? I'm sure someone watching at some point will relate to having a complete disaster in the kitchen. It's funny, a few, well, not a few months ago at this point, it was like probably this time last year, I was baking and Tony was gone and I was like, I was on a roll. I was really, really excited. I was making tons of recipes and I decided to make mini cinnamon rolls, like when all the like mini stuff was happening. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I was making mini cinnamon rolls and I went to get something out of the microwave and it was melted butter and I just kind of slipped and it fell. And so there was melted butter everywhere and I like moved and instantly slipped and fell. My camera went flying and I literally busted my fancy camera because I slipped in butter in the kitchen. So that's why, again, we call this series Fake Cooking Show because I'm not pro. I try. A for effort, sometimes B plus. I don't try, I, like, I've made all of these recipes before, but I'm not super rehearsed. So I'm just gonna. But I feel like most people can relate to that, you know? I just want to push, now that they're cooking a little bit, I want to push down so that it kind of joins. All right. And so while that cooks, we're going to get the eggs ready. I need to get rid of some of these extra potatoes. So we've got some, a little, I think it's easier to work with a cup when you're pouring into things um, rather than just cracking an egg straight. If you're that skilled, go for it, but I'm definitely not. 
I also don't want to break the yolk. Um, if you like, if you don't like, you know, like sunny side up or over easy or whatever eggs, like if you like your eggs more of a scramble or an omelet, scramble them up here. I'm going to do it the other way because I like it separated. It kind of reminds me of like a McDonald's breakfast sandwich or something. All right, so we're just going to press down. We're all cleaned up for the most part. There might be some random peppercorns. I can feel some under my feet, but that's okay. We'll clean later. So let's check on it. So it's coming along. Oops. So what I'm going to do to get it to kind of join, join together is I'm going to sprinkle a tiny bit of cheese on it. Just a little. And now I'm going to close it. Because who doesn't love burnt cheese? That's not going to be burnt. It's just going to be <laughs> cooked. But it's going to be tasty. So our sandwich is starting to come together. We've got our bacon. Again, I would probably say two or three of these. I'm going to do one just for the sake of saving time. Um, you'll have two biscuits. I'll be, let's be honest, they're still pretty warm, so we're good. Um, you'll do an egg. If you prefer scramble, just use a fork and mix it up. You could also make it into kind of like an omelet if you wanted to add some onions or seasonings or whatever. I'm keeping it really simple right now. Um, you could also use egg whites. So if you were trying to be healthy, um, you could do egg whites. Um, you could also skip the biscuits and just make two, um, what do you call it? I can't think of the word. Hash brown patties. Let's see. You could also use, all right, we're getting there. They make, I think they're called birch benders. They make a lot of like keto options for waffles. So if you were trying to stick to like a low carb diet, you could use keto option for your waffles. Um, whatever you like. You don't have to use the biscuits. You can use a waffle mix. I like the biscuits. I think they taste good. Especially the like ready to go ones. They're nice and buttery and tasty. All right. So we're almost there. All right. So it's on the top, but we're fine. Let's see. Worst case scenario, if it falls apart, you just keep cooking it. Right? There's no, it still is going to taste good, but we're good. It's ready to go. I may have had a few disasters along the way, but we've got a little hash brown. Let's see if I can angle it. <laughs> not hash brown, I guess. Technically, it's just potatoes. I'm putting it on my sandwich. Mmm, it's delicious. Okay. Spray, spray. I think the trick with the eggs is to put a little cheese first. It makes them extra tasty and crispy. This is just cheddar. Use whatever you like. I feel like the cheese subject is like a huge issue for people. People complain all the time about whatever cheese they choose to use for things. I'm like, that's not right. And there's, like, there's nothing right or wrong. Oh, I lost the yolk. One sec. Gotta... There we go. See? Everything. There we go. Again, that's why it's our fake cooking show because things aren't always perfect, but that doesn't mean they can't be tasty and that you can't save it in the long run, right? Okay. All right, so I'm going to let that cook for just a second so that when I smush it, it doesn't explode. So I'm just going to do it lightly. I don't know if you guys can see. I should probably try to like move my hands out of the way. I'm just kind of lightly tapping it so it starts cooking without having all that weight on there, because if I do, it's just gonna kind of explode out the edges. Let me check on it. Give it a few more seconds and then I'll close it. Okay. All right. I'm gonna make my coffee while we wait for that to cook. It's nice and steamy. <laughs> So I just have these instant coffees that I used on one of my uh, previous lives, making the um, Starbucks, Starbucks oat milk lattes. They are my favorite. It's like literally, it's called Mount Hagen, I think. The best instant coffee. It tastes so good. It's Once you have it, you won't want to try anything else. So I just do two of them because I like a little extra 
I'm gonna make him for Tony to use one because he doesn't like quite as much coffee, but we're just gonna use a little bit of water. I'm gonna cover this for a second so that it doesn't make the smoke alarms go off. Again, do not leave a towel over anything. That's I, this is not safe procedure, but I don't want to have another disaster. We're already off to a bad start with everything falling apart, so I just don't want it to ruin everything, and then you wouldn't be able to see what it looked like before we ended. So we've got instant coffee. So we're making spiked ones, because it's the weekend, right? So we've got a little vodka. I'm just gonna do a shot. If you're looking to party, do a double shot. This is inspired by one of my favorite drinks at a restaurant nearby called Rabbit Hole, and they have a restaurant uh, drink called The Dude. And it's basically a cold brew on nitro with vanilla, vodka, and like another vanilla liqueur. And then they use a little bit of, um, what's it called? Fresh whipped cream. And then they put a mint sprig, and it's so good. It's one of my favorite drinks ever. Not just for breakfast, I'll have it like in the middle of the day. <laughs> but, um, so I'm making a similar version of it, but with what I have, because this is what I was using for my previous lives. That's what I, I'm kind of, like I'm all about using what you've got. So if you don't have everything that I have, you can try to make something similar, right? It's not like, I feel like 99% of the recipes I post everywhere, there are alternatives. Like you don't need to be stressed if you don't have everything. And that's why I don't post stuff that's like overly intense. I'm not gonna make you go buy like some fancy herb from, you know, Whole Foods or, I love Whole Foods, I didn't mean it like that, but like, you don't have to go buy something super, you know, like, intense. I don't want you to have to spend like $50 on French vanilla pods from Madagascar. Let's check on it. I think it's coming along. Ooh, yeah, we're almost done. So, we're almost done. I'm gonna add a little spurt of whipped cream to my coffee. Because it's, no, <laughs> because it's the weekend, we're going for it, right? So I've got my coffee ready. Found some scraps of cheese and peppercorn. All right, so it looks like we're almost there. All right, so our egg is pretty close to being done. I'm just gonna get my sandwich ready. I don't know if you can see where we're at. We got the biscuit, we got the bacon, we got the cheesy potato. Let's see if I can get this out without. All right, it's coming out. So <laughs> it doesn't look glamorous, but it is going to be tasty. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna unplug this so it stops giving us steamy bacon grease in our faces. And then I'm gonna put this. And technically, you could add a sauce if you wanted. I'd say like a hot sauce would be good. Let me find one. Let me find a hot sauce. Let's see. Don't look. Let's use a little hot sauce. This chili garlic is going to be good. So I'm just going to add a couple. Because I like my breakfast here just spicy. I'm going to put this on top. And we have a beautiful breakfast sandwich. Oh, can you see? I can't tell. My eyesight's terrible. Let's cut it open and see what it looks like. Make sure it's cut nicely. Put it to the side. Oh my goodness. That looks delightful. It's gonna be amazing. So we've got our breakfast sandwich. Mm, I'm hungry. We've got our little spiked iced coffee. We are ready to go. I'm so excited. I wanted to show you one more thing before I go eat my food that I love using when I am making stuff, but in smaller portions. I think I'm work space off because I've got grease everywhere. It's this cute little, it looks like a hair straightener. I've used it before in like Instagram stories and everyone always thinks it's like a hair crimper or straightener. Do not use this on your hair. 
you will fry it off. It is a bag sealer, so if you don't finish a bag, you can seal it off. So you're not wasting, you don't need to use any Ziploc bags or anything. It's one of my favorite purchases. So you just kind of clip it basically shut. And I think this is just like, like it's super cheap. I can't, don't quote me on it. It's only like $5 or something. It's the best $5. And now we're sealed, right? So it can go back in the freezer, the fridge. I might turn the little edge off because I'm, that bugs me. Yeah, right, now we're ready to go. So I'll go and do that with all my stuff. I don't do it with the cheese because it has a little like zip in it, but if you have a bag that you don't finish, it works great for frozen foods because no, frozen foods never like have the right seal or anything. So this is also on there. One of my favorite purchases. So is the little mini waffle iron. Comes in a ton of colors, so many uses. If you guys like that, I can try to do some other fun little, you know, random recipes using the waffle iron that aren't waffles. But anyways, Here's our breakfast sandwich. We're gonna go eat it, Doug and I. He's pacing below me, hoping that I drop some bacon or something. We're gonna go eat our breakfast, have a little spiked iced coffee. Mm. Cheers, happy Sunday, and I will be back tomorrow, and then probably again throughout the week. I don't really know what time and like, days and times work for people, so if you guys have any input, just let me know. I've been trying to do 11 o'clock on weekends, but we only have so many options. So weekdays, I feel like four Pacific time is like decent. Cause then we can hit the East Coast and some people on the West Coast. Um, and we still have a little bit of light. So I'm not like flooded with fake lighting in my kitchen. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any ideas or input or questions, you know where to find me. You can find me on Instagram. You can email me, go on my blog. I've been trying to link all of these on the blog so that you can find them, but you can also just go to my Amazon storefront and they're all there. And I've been linking things. Um, I had a few questions, people asking for nice job on the sandwich. It looks good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, I've been linking the clothing I've been wearing in a specific Amazon list because I've gotten questions about it and I hadn't been putting them in the, what's it called? Um, like the links below because I never really know them to wear. But 99% of what I own clothing wise is from Amazon. So there's a whole section. Most of these products are all listed on my Amazon storefront as well. Maybe not the food and stuff, but like the waffle iron and the little sealer. So I hope you guys have a great Sunday and I will see you soon.